Dear comrades, it is an honor and privilege for me to be invited to the symposium titled The World is Opening, a New Page, Revolution's Time Has Come, here in Istanbul. I thank the Socialist Party of the Oppressed and the Marxist Theory Journal for inviting me. I convey warmest comradely greetings of revolutionary solidarity to all participating in the symposium, especially my fellow speakers from Rojava, Tunis, Lebanon, Sudan, Argentina, Chile, Philippines, and other countries. The symposium is prompted by the unprecedented scale and intensity of the people's mass protests which have been breaking out in all continents since last year. These have been directed against imperialism and local reactionary forces. I dare say that the current wave of mass protests signal the transition to a new era of unprecedented anti-imperialist resistance by the peoples of the world and the resurgence of the world proletarian revolution. We see today the intensification of all major contradictions in the world capitalist system, such as those between labor and capital, those between the imperialist powers and the oppressed peoples and nations, those between the imperialist powers and states that assert national independence and the socialist cause, and those among the imperialist powers. The intensification of contradictions between labor and capital within imperialist countries and among imperialist powers is due to the worsening crisis of overproduction relative to the drastically reduced income of the working class in imperialist countries and in the rest of the world capitalist system. The workers have become restless and rebellious due to unemployment, low income, rising prices of basic commodities, austerity measures, the curtailment of their democratic rights, and the rise of chauvinism, racism, and fascism. Among the imperialist powers, the U.S. and China have emerged as the two main contenders in the struggle for a redivision of the world. Each tries to have its own alliance with other imperialist powers. The traditional alliance of the U.S., Europe, and Japan is still operative in such multilateral agencies like the IMF, World Bank, and WTO, and in NATO and other military alliances. Reigns against the traditional imperialist powers are China and Russia, which have broadened their alliance in BRICS, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, BRICS Development Bank, the Belt and Road Initiative, and the Asian Infrastructure Investment Fund. Since so many decades ago, when they developed nuclear weapons of mass destruction and missile delivery systems, the major imperialist powers have so far avoided direct wars of aggression against each other by undertaking proxy wars, despite the frequent U.S. wars of aggression against underdeveloped countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. They have developed the neo-colonial ways and means of shifting the burden of crisis to the underdeveloped countries. They engage in a struggle for a redivision of the world but so far they have not directly warred on each other to acquire or expand their sources of cheap labor and raw materials, markets, fields of investment, and spheres of influence. They make the oppressed peoples and nations of the underdeveloped countries suffer the main brunt of the recurrent and worsening economic and financial crisis of the world capitalist system, even as they make them the main source of super profits through a higher rate of exploitation. Currently, they continue the policy of neoliberal globalization for the purpose. To suppress the people's resistance, oppression, and exploitation, they provide their client states with the means of state terrorism and fascist rule by the bureaucrat comprador bourgeoisie. They also use their respective client states for proxy wars and counter-revolutionary wars for maintaining their economic territory or for redividing the world. Despite their attempts to shift the burden of crisis to the oppressed peoples and nations, 
The imperialist powers are driven to extract higher profits from their own working class under the neoliberal policy regime, to suppress the resistance of the proletariat and people to oppression and exploitation in both the developed and underdeveloped countries, they have enacted so-called anti-terrorist laws and are increasingly prone to the use of state terrorism and sponsor fascist organizations and movements to counter the growing revolutionary movement of the proletariat and the people. In the underdeveloped countries, U.S. imperialism and its puppet regimes are unleashing the worst forms of aggression and state terrorism against the people in order to perpetuate the neoliberal policy of unbridled greed. Since the end of World War II, the wars of aggression and campaigns of terror unleashed by U.S. have resulted in 20 to 30 million people killed in Korea, Indochina, Indonesia, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, and other countries. But U.S. imperialism has also suffered outstanding defeats, such as in North Korea, Cuba, Vietnam, and other Indo-Chinese countries. And it has been unable to stop the decolonization of colonies and semi-colonies, which is still an ongoing process. The proletariat and people have persevered in protracted people's war in the Philippines, India, Kurdistan, Turkey, Palestine, Peru, Colombia, and elsewhere. The spread of arms where U.S. imperialism have unleashed wars of aggression, such as in the Middle East and Africa, can open the way to the rise of more armed revolutionary movements. There are effective governments like the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, Cuba, Vietnam, Venezuela, and Syria that assert national independence and the socialist cause. They enjoy the support of the people, stand up against U.S. imperialism, and take advantage of the contradictions among the imperialist powers in order to counter sanctions, military blockade, and aggression. The people and revolutionary forces led by the proletariat can strengthen themselves in the course of anti-imperialist struggles. Since last year, we have seen the unprecedented rise and spread of gigantic anti-imperialist mass protests occurring in both the underdeveloped and developed countries. These signify the transition to the resurgence of the world proletarian revolution. They are a manifestation of the grave crisis of the world capitalist system and the domestic ruling systems and the inability of the imperialist powers and the puppet states to rule in the old way. The massive and sustained mass protests in various countries of Europe North America, Latin America, Asia, and Africa bring to the surface the deep-seated detestation of the people for the extreme oppression and exploitation that they have suffered. The proletariat and people of the world are fighting back. We are definitely in transition to a great resurgence of anti-imperialist struggles and the world proletarian revolution. The broad masses of the people are rising up against the worst forms of imperialist oppression and exploitation, such as neoliberalism, austerity measures, gender discrimination, oppression of indigenous peoples, fascism, wars of aggression, and environmental destruction. The starting points or inciting moments for the mass protest may be concrete issues of wide variability, but they always rise up to the level of protests against imperialism and all reaction. In the last 50 years, we have seen imperialism, neocolonialism, modern revisionism, neoliberalism, and neoconservatism attack and put down the proletariat and people of the world. Now the people are resisting as never before and generating new revolutionary forces, including parties of the proletariat and mass organizations. These will ultimately result in the spread of armed revolutionary movements and the rise of socialist states and people's democracies with a socialist perspective. The Filipino people and their revolutionary forces are gratified that they have persevered in the new democratic revolution through protracted people's war and with a socialist perspective in the last more than 50 years. Loyal to the just revolutionary cause, they have waged revolutionary struggle 
resolutely and militantly and have fought even more fiercely against the counter-revolutionary campaigns of the enemy. They have been inspired by the revolutionary victories of national liberation movements and socialism abroad, and have become ever more determined to contribute the, to the resurgence of the world proletarian revolution. They take pride in being referred to as one of the torch bearers of the anti-imperialist struggles of the peoples of the world and the world proletarian revolution. Their revolutionary will and fighting spirit are more than ever higher as their revolutionary struggles are now in concert with the resurgent mass struggles of the proletariat and people on a global scale. We foresee that in the next 50 years, the crisis-stricken world capitalist system will continue to break down and give way to the rise of anti-imperialist and socialist states and societies. Long live the proletariat and peoples of the world, down with the imperialist powers and all reaction, Long live the anti-imperialist and socialist cause. Victory for the world proletarian socialist revolution.